Home. Chapter 26. A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction Written and Narrated by Miro Rose. Artwork provided by XAA on Tumblr. You can find a link to the artist in the description box. If you haven't already, make sure to stay up to date on the latest parts of your favorite fanfiction by subscribing to this channel and hitting the bell for notifications. If you've listened this far to the opening and you're waiting for an opening comment, comment Ladybug's Blessing in the comment section. Now then, thank you so much for tuning in for another chapter of Home. Please enjoy chapter 26. Adrian Agrest. Had he just received Ladybug's blessing? Adrian couldn't believe it. Slumping back onto the couch, the young superhero couldn't suppress his grin. It almost felt like an ex saying he could date her best friend, even though that wasn't even close to the situation at hand. Yeah, her blessing. He had her blessing for both the ring and for his relationship with Marinette. That was beyond amazing. It felt like the missing piece from his life pressed in, completing the puzzle he tried to shove answers in while hoping for a pretty picture. Are you just going to stare at the wall like a man who forgot Camembert exists? Or are you going to go out and get me some? Ah, yes. He'd promised Plag more cheese. The rest of the day came and went, with a few dry texts to Marinette. Ah, it must be hard for her because she's still processing that he was a part-time superhero. But over the next three days, Adrian found himself doubting their relationship more and more. Marinette would stutter when he tried to talk to her, and she wouldn't make eye contact when he would wave. Had he gotten it wrong? Did she not like him? Sure, they might have had a good relationship as Marinette and Cat Noir, but what if she couldn't think of him, Adrian, that way? Hmm. What they needed was a date. Sadly, he was all out of date ideas. It was as though the well of inspiration dried up inside him when he thought of taking her on a date. Adrian had far more money to his name than any teenager should, and his mask brought him access to places that, again, no teenager should have. It's not like he could take her out to some culinary bake night or something. She literally lived in a bakery. He was too embarrassed to attempt cross-stitch again, but... But he could take her to a craft store. Then she could pick out what they'd make. Oh, genius. She'd love that. His words were a jumble of letters as he texted her, despite her sitting behind him, and he smiled when he heard her phone buzz. Adrian heard Alia gasp, clearly reading the text behind his head and it only made him more excited. He knew he had her blessing without needing to ask. She'd tried to set them up countless times before, and he wasn't a fool to such things. <sighs> if only past him knew how much he would grow to like this girl. Turning around, Adrian expected to see Marinette smiling or even nodding, but instead her head was cradled in her arms, face down on the tabletop. Oh. Okay. Guess she doesn't like the idea after all. Or we could go get, like, chips or something. Maybe a burger? He suggested, hoping to reclaim his position as Alia sighed. Sounds great, Nino said, placing his hand on Alia's wrist. We'll go together, the four of us. Adrian noticed the wink exchange, but said nothing. Thank you, DJ Wi-Fi, for the assist. Cool. I'll text my driver. Why don't we walk? Alia suggested. What do you think, Marinette? Yep! She raised her head, her face pink and bangs ruffled. Okay, then. 
It was a date. A group date. It was... Adrian's first group date. He was going on a date with his friends. How exciting! He was ecstatic, and all he wanted to do was tell Marinette about it, which seemed silly because considering she was the girl he was going on a date with. The minutes felt like hours, and hours felt like minutes until the school bell rang, and the four of them scurried out before other friends or Chloe could. Well, Adrian scurried, and turned around to see Alia holding Marinette's hand to lead her out of the classroom. Frowning, he addressed the feeling in the pit of his belly. Shouldn't he be the one holding her hand? Then again, he hadn't offered it, so it wasn't his place to get upset unless she outwardly rejected it. Okay. Oh, but he couldn't. He couldn't hold another girl's hand in public. That whole girlfriend thing he had going for the media. Great. Why did his dad even want him to date anyway? There was nothing more infuriating than being a pawn. Sure, he wouldn't have minded last year, but now he had feelings for someone else. Did his father not realize that maybe his son was capable of being a regular teenage boy? <sighs> Shake it off, kid. But their afternoon outing did nothing to help his mood. Instead of a pleasant grab-a-burger and chat, Adrian found himself holding the conversation together with Alia, with assists from Nino. Marinette distracted herself by sipping on her strawberry shake, but he was determined to make this work. Break the ice now or never, right? That's a cute cardigan, Adrian said, using his chin to point at the cable knit wrap she wore. He knew she made it, but instead of some kind of thank you or even a uh, you think, Marinette just stared at him, wide-eyed like a deer in headlights. Yeah, I like it. Is it new? Alia asked, tugging on her sleeve. Uh, yeah. Marinette turned to Alia and nodded vigorously. Yeah, it is. Is this the one you were working on last week? Adrian bit into his hamburger. Ah. Uh... She flicked her eyes from Alia to him, then back again. Yeah. Is it? Alia gave her sleeve another tug. Yeah, I used the... I I used the yarn my grandma got me. Again, the answer was directed at Alia. What was he doing wrong? Did she just not like him anymore? Or... Or could she not handle being his friend in public? No, no! Don't think like that! Why couldn't they talk normally? Sure, he couldn't brush her hand like he wanted, and casual flirts across the table didn't seem appropriate at this point. Why? Why was this so hard? It wasn't this hard in the movies. Yeah, he knew they weren't real, but it didn't seem normal to not be able to have a simple conversation. Retiring to his bedroom in a sour mood, Adrian came to a simple conclusion as he sat, sulking on his bed. In the future, he wouldn't let his dates know he was a superhero. Thank you so much for listening. Chapter 27 is on the way. If you've made it this far, comment, don't let them know. Um, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, and give this video a like if you've made it this far. I feel like I've earned it at this point if I was able to entertain you for, I don't know, like 10-ish minutes. I will catch you in the next one. Thanks! Bye!